let's look at the use of data analytics in internal audit. Here we have some specialty applications of data analytics. And I want you to actually understand that these are the so-called specialty applications because they, they are for a certain use and they are for you know, a, a, a very predefined purpose. So let's look at the purpose of compliance, okay? It's used, you are using data analytics to be able to ensure compliance, okay? Let's give an example of that. So say uh, a delivery address check against export restrictions. Let me explain that a bit. Uh, th this is uh, you know, an example, for example, actually, where you might have, say, an online retail system which is not allowed to sell to certain countries. You're not allowed to sell products to, you know, Syria or Iran or Iraq or, you know, other countries. I actually don't know which uh, list those are on, but you might have export restrictions. Now, on an online platform, you might have, you know, requests for deliveries to those places. And indeed, you could verify whether, you know, through data analytics, you know, usually your system would directly block these, but maybe you didn't think about blocking those in the past. So you could say use data analytics to see if there was, you know, any sales to those particular countries. And this, of course, is a very simple example, usually just filtering by country, but it kind of gives you the idea that you can use data analytics for compliance purposes. Another purpose, error detection. So here it is used to detect errors such as duplicates and valid entries, syntax errors, or incorrect classification. Imagine you know, a database, you have a very large number of entries and you are trying to understand if some of the entries are incorrect. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a case uh, that I saw. We were looking through a, a database of beneficial owners. That's say owners of companies. In fact, this is very, very confidential information. And we were actually surprised in our table to find uh, a beneficial owner who wasn't born yet. So you are <laughs> you're trying to convince me that uh, a beneficial owner is someone who's not born yet. Now, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is, you know, impossible and unless they really know the, the, the date of a future birth of the person, this is an obvious error. But of course, this is an obvious error. We found some that were, where we had more doubts, such as a beneficial owner who'd only be two years old. Now, this could be possible. And so we would obtain extra information about this particular thing. Or we had a you know, beneficial owner born in some African country, but with a very European name. It's completely possible. It is completely possible, but you know, we, we just wanted to verify that. It, it's completely possible. What it, it kind of you know, brings out more questions, and so you verify that. You use it to you know, check, say, invalid entries. Huh? Fraud detection. Here it's used to identify potential fraud. I give the example that, for example, on me, that I was still uh, you know, doing my studies, uh, my master's degree, when I got a call from my bank. And indeed, that call from my bank was you know, a, a banker asking me, did you make this purchase? Did you make this purchase? Because obviously, you know, they, they had gone through their records. They had found an unusual transaction for a student. And indeed, I was not a rich student. But it turns out that, you know, I, 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 I was actually in a room with others. So I kind of, you know, exited that room. And I said to, you know, the, the, the banker on the phone, yeah, that's, that's me who did that transaction. It turned out it concerned the engagement ring for my future and now current wife, and indeed it was a very unusual transaction for a student to make, uh, a relatively high amount that I'm not going to disclose, especially if, you know, on, on a student uh, uh, lack of salary. Yeah? 
but indeed they had used that to try to look for potential fraud. They had probably used the system to look for potential fraud and noticed that this was really unusual for a student to be making this kind of transaction. Huh? Uh, an example is fake suppliers or non-existent employees. You can also use fraud, uh, fraud you can also use fraud detection to look for fake suppliers or non-existent employees. We had the case recently of Afghanistan where apparently there were certain fake ghost soldiers in the Afghan army. Now I can tell you that is a problem that they might have in Afghanistan due to lack of information systems, but it's not usually a problem that you'd have in most other countries that indeed have better, say, social security systems, have better you know, passport and ID uh, identification systems, and corporate networks that will allow you to very quickly detect this, this kind of ghost employee. Operational performance. So it can be used to assess uh, the internal control effectiveness. Uh, indeed, this is you know, what I've done in the past. We called it... Um, you know, c control monitoring, but it can be uh, different things as well. Uh, an example is compliance with new policies. And indeed, this is one of the checks that we do. So new policies came out. They required certain things. They'd send, uh, you know, internal audit to verify certain controls uh, as part of, you know, an insurance engagement. And indeed, we would verify whether, you know, by digging through the data, whether new policies and procedures had actually been put in place, you know, around the world for this particular um, for this particular case. Huh? Text analysis. Now, in text analysis, this is used to extract facts from unstructured text data. Now, this is a fun little thing I did, uh, learning a bit about you know the Python programming language. I took tweets, you know, tweets from uh, Twitter, and I used a certain, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, machine learning program to verify whether the tweets would be kind of positive, you know, uh, I, I guess, you know, joyful, happy, or negative, you know, angry, or, uh, you know, l let me just put it not happy. Yeah? Uh, and, and indeed, that was, you know, a little thing that I did. Now, imagine an organization getting 5,000 tweets, maybe over a month, maybe over a day, depends on the size of your organization. You cannot necessarily know, you know, from from all of, from reading them, uh, what 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 the mood towards your organization is. But with a program that you know, I'm a, I was a beginner at uh, I was a beginner at Python, with with a very simple program that I made, I would be able to analyze the tweets. And it would tell me, you know, overall the mood is positive. You know, overall the mood is negative. And be able to see different trends in the tweets. So, you know, my company might have done something. And then I would be able to see through the tweets, you know, that there was a very strong negative impact or, you know, very unkind words said on Twitter about my company. And so this is sort of text analysis which works better and better thanks to machine learning. Yeah, example uh, tweet mood analysis. Network analysis. Now, network analysis involves analyzing activities to most efficiently reach goals. And it sounds a little bit vague here, but in fact, you've already seen this. The PRT or critical path method that we saw in uh, the preceding section is a kind of network analysis and would allow you to use data analytics to you know, most efficiently reach your goals in this way. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, just check the other part out. Mm -hmm.